All right, Tim Sykes here. Sorry for not doing a video the past uh, day or day and a half. Um, kind of had a crazy schedule. I'll tell you about it when I'm older. But lots of trades. The market is absolutely insane right now. Um, I made a few thousand dollars the past few days. Um, some good trades. Had to cut some losses. Uh, was basically wrong on NXTD there. Was right on NXTD this time. Uh, CANN, I really underestimated. You know, this thing is up, what, $3 a share since I bought it. Uh, CNBX, decent little trade, had to cut losses here. WKHS, uh, kind of was wrong about that, but still got out decently. NXTD uh, was decent about that. And QIWI, uh, I underestimated. So I'll go over those in a second. But first, I just want to share with you my thoughts Um this is what I think. And a lot of people took this as like uh, me hating on crypto. Uh, I said, I'm about to go to the bathroom and I might set up a payment system so that people can get paid via cryptocurrency when they have to go to the bathroom too. I'm going to call it crazy shit, ticker S-H-I-T, and I'll ICO it for $2 billion next month. And then I tag some of these ridiculous uh, stocks that are you know, running uh, based on their, their cryptocurrency and blockchain and Bitcoin relationships. Um, I have nothing against Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I'm thrilled that this is the latest hot sector. Um, I just don't think that it's going to revolutionize the world like everyone thinks. Uh, if you are a student of history, you will see this kind of chart pattern again and again and again. Uh, we saw police equipment stocks. We saw the shipping sector. We saw low float stocks. We saw Ebola stocks. We saw medical marijuana stocks. Uh, these kinds of sectors heat up for a few weeks or even a few months, and then they fail miserably. And then they try to reheat up again. Um, just be warned, you know, I posted this tweet because I'm, I'm mocking how much people believe this time is different. And everyone always thinks this time is different, and rarely ever is it. So, you know, I hope these stocks keep spiking as much as they want. It gives so much opportunity. It's insane. Uh, but at the same time, just keep one eye open, you know, just don't ever get too confident that, you know, Bitcoin is going to go to a billion or that all these little companies are going to really do well. Um, this really reminds me back of 98, 99, 2000, when I made my first million nearly 20 years ago, when I would just buy companies that added dot com to their name. Um, I remember Sportsman's Guide dot com or Sportsman's Guide Inc. Uh, and the stock tripled or quadrupled within a week when they added dot com and they were going to change the world by selling camping gear online. You know, they still sell camping gear online. They didn't really change the world and the stock crashed. So just beware, just because a company is getting into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency does not mean that it's going to succeed. And even if they do succeed, way too many people have way too many expectations uh, right now. So for me, I will play the price action. I will play the momentum. I'm not shorting this stuff. It's scary to short. But at the same time, I also know that this is shit. Um, that's the kind of cynical way I like to approach stuff. And to all you idealistic people out there, God bless your little hearts. Um, you know, I'll be there to collect your broken hearts when, you know, the time is right in a few weeks or a few months. Don't forget who warned you, okay? Um, also, I want to thank Pencils of Promise. They made me this really nice video, my least popular video of the past few months because it's for charity, but pretty cool. Even though people are stupid and evil, um, I'm very proud of donating a million dollars to Pencils of Promise. It's my favorite charity. I'm actually up to like 1.6 million. Um, I got to share with you some of my recent donations to them. But even with the million dollars, uh, you know, 22 schools so far have been built, 33,911 students. Um, are going to school because of my donations and I'm really proud of that so I can be cynical I can make fun of this ridiculousness uh, but at the same time the money that I'm making from the markets and from teaching I'm very proud to give back to the less fortunate and you know I knew that I was impacting like thousands of kids I didn't know that the number was 34,000 so or near 34,000 and that's just pencils of promise I've also don donated um, over a million dollars to other charities now too. So the number is closer to 50,000. Um, and I actually wrote a blog post uh, on timothysykes.com, if you look, uh, called My New Challenge. 
Uh, and my new challenge to myself is to uh, have a million kids in school every day. And I think that's a, a good uh, goal considering I'm like three, four, maybe 5% of the way there. So I want you to have big goals and I want you to use opportunities to get to your goals, to achieve them. You know, no different than I love the fact that most people hate penny stocks. I love the fact that there's widespread misinformation out there because it allows me to, you know, frankly, have a pretty easy job. Just tell you the truth. I love all of the crooks and the frauds and the scumbags and, you know, binary uh, and Forex and Bitcoin who make you think that this stuff is like the easiest stuff ever when in fact it's not. 90% of traders across all various uh, industries in trading lose money. So this is not easy. And you can either learn from me or you can learn the hard way on your own, but you will learn one way or another that, you know, this is not as easy as you think. And it's going to take studying and it's going to need to, you're going to need to adapt and you're going to need to kind of look at the market and say, wait a minute, let me try different strategies. Let me try different patterns and not just believe that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is the future and not just believe in any one company because any one trade can make you poor. If you go all in, if you use leverage, if you get too cocky, and I need to teach you to trade this kind of volatile stuff, but also trade it in a safe way. So with that in mind, let me get to some stocks in play. Um, KODK is the latest supernova. Kodak, Eastman Kodak is back in play after hundreds of years of being in business and you know years of just incompetence. You know, I think that the, the company even went bankrupt. They emerged out of bankruptcy and, you know, the stock has done nothing but go straight down. And now all of a sudden, blockchain is going to save Kodak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just ridiculous. Uh, but the volume is there and the price action is there. So I wouldn't short it. Um, that said, you know, it's a pretty sweet run up. And I kind of screwed up today. I watched it. I had it in my, uh, you know, trigger in my hair. I said this on my roughly $3,000 profit on COGT. Uh, this was midday, and I said I'm taking gains as my chat room discovered it's a paid pump. Thank you to whoever brought this up in the chat room that COGT was a paid pump. Um, this thing really would have run. You know, this was touted as the new Bitcoin cryptocurrency play uh, by the NIA, which has a, a massive, massive, um, you know, just list where they just send it out to everybody, and the stock can really run for several days like QIWI. That was their last pick that I underestimated. This one, they kind of sold out though, and they got paid, I think, $70,000 to pump it. Um, so I had to get out once I realized that it was a paid pump. Still made a few grand. Thank you to Benzinga Pro for being roughly 10 minutes late. Um, and that little 10 minutes late on your alert, uh, you know, was a nice spike to sell into. There's all these different newsletters and different alerts and they're usually pretty delayed. Um, it's kind of laughable. Uh, I think this was Benzinga Pro that was 10 minutes late on this one. And I sold into all the Benzinga Pro people uh, buying. So thank you, Benzinga Pro, for your laziness. Um, QIWI, though, I underestimated. So NIA, you know, you had one really good one on QIWI. Then you kind of sold out for this play. I get it. You got to pay your bills. You know, you make one good pick. And then you sell out for the next. I'm not blaming you. I'm just going to teach everybody what you guys do. Um, and then at midday, I said this. I was like, no thanks to buying paid pumps, even if it's blockchain. On to the next now, KODK. And then I had something come up. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'm running quite a few businesses. And, you know, I trade when I can. Midday, I'm not really going to trade that much. Um, so it was unfortunate that I was watching KODK, but I did not take advantage of it. I'm glad, though, that... I put it in my alert. Like even sometimes when I'm selling one stock and I'm watching another, you know, for me, no one trade matters. It's all about teaching you the process. So a lot of people made a lot of money when I specifically didn't buy KODK, but I brought it up midday. And this was around 12.03 p.m. midday. Um, it was right around here. You know, KODK had just spiked from the threes to the fives. And I was watching it on the dip here in the fours. And it really wasn't doing anything, and I had to leave pretty much right around here. So I missed this. This was a really nice breakout here above 550 all the way up to 650. And then if you missed that, you had a second chance. So you either buy the first breakout or you buy the dip when it holds that key breakout level. 
um, you know, up to the sevens. There's no way I would have held after hours to, to the nines here, or, you know, maybe by the time I post this video, it'll be in the tens, twelves, fifteens, who knows? Um, for me, this is the kind of pattern that I look for this breakout and then this successful hold of the breakout. So at most, even if I had been there midday, which again, most middays I take off. Um, so it's it's very rare for a, a stock to, to move like this midday. Uh, but this is where I would have, could have, would have, should have bought uh, in the 550s. And I most definitely would have been out, you know, for probably 50 or 75 cents a share. Or if I had bought the dip here at like 575, you know, I would have been out here by 660 and made the same 50, 75 cents a share. This is my area of expertise. And as you can see here, I mean, even into the close, it didn't do much. This is just after hours, very illiquid price action. Um, Kodak has traded 70 million shares though, uh, in total since they announced their whole little cryptocurrency blockchain for photographers bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's laughable. Uh, we saw this just the other day on CNET. Um, right here when it went from the ones to the 11s, you know, it tried to come back here a few different chat rooms, tried to buy it all together. Um, and it just, it can't, you know, once it goes up that much, it's, it's just tough. LFIN was the original, uh, or one of the original big blockchain movers, uh, a few days ago when it went from five to 140. So even though I'm saying this is bullshit and I, I can't, really can't help laughing at some of these press releases, like history is repeating itself. Um, I still don't want to step in front of a freight train. I don't want to just short this right away. I know many shorts are licking their chops. Be careful, guys. You know, I know a lot of shorts who have been sent to the hospital and to the poorhouse the past few weeks and months. You know, they've been way too aggressive the past, uh, you know, every hot sector and now they're getting their asses handed to them. So I know that I'm known as mostly a short seller, but you know, recently, the past few years, I've been mostly long. I actually ran into a guy here, uh, he works at the hotel that I'm staying at, pretty cool, you know, and he, he looked at me and he's like, Tim? And I was like, yeah. Like, I just thought that he, you know, recognized me from, you know, I, I signed in my name at the hotel that I'm staying at. Um, but then he took me outside and he was like, Tim, I'm, I was one of your students. And I was like, oh, cool, how'd you do? And, you know, when someone says, I was one of your students, you don't think like, oh, they're going to tell you something positive. But he's like, listen, Tim, I, I, you know, I started off as your student. I love learning, but I, I really am not good at short selling. And I feel bad saying this, but in the past year, I've made 50,000 going long. And I was like, dude, I've switched to going long. He didn't even realize it because he was my student, you know, years ago when I was all short selling. It's good to adapt. And also never feel bad if you make money in a different way. You know, I know some short sellers who were making money. You know, my top student, Tim Grittani, made over $2 million last year, and he's primarily short bias. So not all short sellers are losing. But if you can make money in any way, that's fantastic. If you do make money in these cryptocurrencies, fantastic. If you make money in binary and Forex, fantastic. I just try to teach you the odds, and I try to warn you about the bad elements in these speculative sectors. So if you are making a lot of money, do me a favor. Lock in a quarter of your profits right now, um, or you know even half of your profits, just to play it safe. Um, I know that you know you want to be a gunslinger, and guess what? I sell way too soon usually. COGTI timed pretty well. Um, this was you know it, it spiked all the way up to the sixes the other day, and then today it got up to the five sixties, and then bounced to the five forties. But it's tough. It's tough when you find out that it's a paid pump, you know. COGT and KODK were the two midday runners. Uh, KODK is not a paid pump. You know, they just issued a press release saying they're getting into blockchain. So that turned out to be a better one. Now HMNY is spiking after hours on, on news that they might do an ICO. And, you know, this is a company, they're merging with moviepass.com where you can basically go to the movie theater all you want for like 10 bucks a month. Uh, you know, it sounds like a cool business. I mean, they just passed one and a half million uh, subscribers. It was pretty crazy. This was the spike on news of the subscribers, which is actually, you know, very fundamentally good. And it was kind of funny and a sign of the times that the stock was only up like five or 10 cents a share on the day when they announced solid subscriber numbers. And then it spikes big after hours 
on an interview that the CEO did talking about blockchain and cryptocurrency. That is a sign of the times. Like earnings winners, good actual businesses, eh, you know, you know the stock might go up a little bit. But whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're getting into blockchain and cryptocurrency? Whoa, wait a minute. You don't even have an actual business? Ho, 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 this is big news. Whoa, you just said the magic words. That's the kind of environment that we're in. And it would be wrong of me not to mock it. Um, you know, I, again, God bless all you people doing ICOs. God bless you guys making 10, 20, 30,000% on these bullshit little alt exchanges. Um, enjoy the party while it lasts. Just remember that the party never does last as long as you think it does. So I'd rather you guys take safe profits. If you are up 10,000%, 20,000, 30,000%, just remember to take some off the table because too many people go down with a ship. Um, and then they, they regret it. And you know, no one in the past has really warned them. You know, I tried warning people during the last medical marijuana craze in 2014 and people were like, you know, made money. And then it was down 20%, down 50%. And they're like, well, you know, we're down 50%. We might as well just hold and, and ride the wave. And part of the reason why I'm so crude with my analogies about taking a shit is because all shit goes down the toilet. Um, all of this stuff will go down the toilet. There's no riding waves down the toilet. It just goes straight down eventually. Now, when that will happen is anyone's guess. I hope this stuff goes on for another year, another two years, another three years. Let the circus act continue as long as possible. There are so many plays. There's so much volatility. Um, you have to ride it as long as you can. And as long as the situations present themselves. Um, you know, I made roughly a quarter of a million dollars trading in 2017. Guess what? I would say probably 70, 80% of it was on shit, uh, you know, speculative blockchain, cryptocurrency, marijuana, uh, shipping, low flow, whatever hot sector was in play. That is the vast majority of my trading profits every year. So when some of you guys like get offended when I start ripping on blockchain, I'm not against it. I'm for it. At the same time, I'm also not going to just drink this, you know, ridiculousness that, that infects too many people where they think that the whole world is going to change and all these stocks and all these cryptocurrencies are going to go to a million. The day of reckoning will be there. I don't know if it's tomorrow or in a week or in a month or in a year, and I'm not hoping for it. I just know that it will be there because I am a student of history and this is what history teaches me. Um, I hope that this goes on as long as possible. Enjoy the delirium. Enjoy the party. Maybe it'll be like space in Miami and it'll just keep going or 11 in Miami, these 24 hour clubs. Let the party continue. Yeah. Enjoy it. I'm not the bad guy here. I'm not calling the cops to end the party. I just want you to be aware of the ridiculousness. Um, in fact, leave a comment underneath this video saying, um, I love this crazy market because you should and you should appreciate it, and you respect it, and even if you're missing it. You know, I saw some people, some of my students buying uh, KODK, and they're buying it in the, the low fours on the dip here, and they're selling it in the high fours, and they're like, I totally missed. And then meanwhile, they're making 10, 15, 20% on their money. If you make 10, 15, 20% on your money in a day or in an hour, you didn't miss, you dumb fucks, okay? You just aren't maximizing everything. And that's fine. It takes time. All the time I make 10, 15, 20%. I make singles. So perhaps my overly cynical, overly safe approach is the wrong approach for this market. But I don't know how to teach non-safe strategies. I don't know how to say, hey, Kodak is the future. This thing is going to double in a day. I don't know how to do that. I know how to recognize this as a blockchain play. I know how to recognize this as a big percent gainer. All you have to do is search stocks to trade big percent gainers. I know to recognize this as a breakout and then a confirmed breakout when it holds it. After that, this is all euphoria. And I don't know how to predict or trade or react to euphoria. So I have a very specific set of skills like Liam Neeson and Taken. And that is learning how to take singles. And guess what? The singles add up to millions of dollars over the years. That is my whole thesis. That is my life. That is my teaching style. Enjoy the euphoria, ride it as best you can. I love taking small gains because it adds up. 
So anyways, that's today's lesson. I got to get going. Um, again, leave a comment underneath this video if you understand uh, a little bit of how crazy this market is and say, I love this crazy market if you love it as much as I do. Cheers.